Greetings and welcome back, fellow audio enthusiasts. It is I, Jason, your host of Two Channel Listening. Yes, it is that time again for another speaker review. This is going to be considered part two of my review time with Vienna Acoustics loudspeakers. If you have not First, watch the Mozart Grand SC against the Harbeth Compact 7, the XD version. I would highly recommend that you watch that before carrying on with this review. But first, a shout out and thank you to my friends at the Music Room in Erie, Colorado. They're the ones that made this in-home audition of the Vienna Acoustics Loudspeakers a reality for me. Take it away. The Music Room is the world's leader in used hi-fi audio and a dealer for many of the best brands in the business. We've heard it all and we know what works. Okay. Before I can lay out my thoughts on these gorgeous Beethoven Baby Grand SEs, there needs to be a tiny little bit of a recap for you new viewers tuning in for the very first time. So I had originally requested an in-home audition of the Vienna Acoustics Mozart Grand SEs to go up against my Harbeth Compact 7s. Both speakers are nearly identical in price, and interestingly enough, between the two companies, there is a lot of shared similarities that I have to regurgitate quickly for you. Unlike Harbeth, Peter Gangster, the head of Gangster Air of Vienna Acoustics, he is known for building very slim, very heavy furniture grade cabinets with his own bespoke drivers. Now what he calls it is basically a mixture of, of different types of polypropylene alloys, if you will, and he came up with the 3XP spider cone woofer design that he uses in his speakers, as well as for the mid ranges, they are the 3XP regulars. And these handle mid, the mid woofers in the mid range frequencies. The only off the shelf driver that he is using is a specifically special spec and hand doped applied scan speak 1.1 inch tweeter. Now I had found the Mozart Grand SEs to be one of the one of the most musically pleasing speakers that I had ever auditioned in any of my rooms. They're just they're both warm and delicate and yet they have tons of resolving power without the without the ability to without the ability to be fatiguing. That is, that is a very difficult balance that a lot of speakers fail at. Now, with the exception of my old 170 pound Avalon Acoustics Radiant speakers, there's just, there's something magical with the Vienna Acoustics, especially those Mozarts, with how they treated orchestral music. Just, there's something about the Mozart Grand SEs and playing orchestral music that is, it is not like any of the other speakers that I've owned, save for those Avalon acoustics. The other interesting trick that was up the Mozart Grand Sleeve was its ability to actually make listening to hard rock, like say Iron Maiden, easier to listen to. However, at the end of the day, I'm a pretty demanding enthusiast. A speaker that I'm going to choose to put my hard earned dollars against, it has to be, it does have to be revealing. It has to, it has to have energy. It has to have punch, it has to have some good slam to it. And at the same time, I can't get tired of it 30 minutes into a listening session. That's quite a lot of demands on most speakers that are under $5,000 today. I want a speaker that's going to have that instrument separation for orchestral music, but at the same time, it's got to have the speed, rhythm, pace, and just the energy when it comes to tom drums and snare drums. And for the most part, I want to I want to hear a, a real a realistic sounding upright bass for when it's time to put some jazz on. Again, kind of demanding, aren't I? 
So at the end of the day, with the Mozart Grand SE is against the Compact 7s, the Compact 7s, they carried the day because they just, they have more of that rhythm, they have more of the punch, and the Mozarts were just, they were just too easy, and they didn't have the feeling that I was looking for, so I packed up those Mozarts, send them, I sent them back to the music room, and I had requested their bigger brother, the Beethoven Baby Grand SEs. However, again, for those of you who are new to the channel and might be new to Vienna Acoustics in general because there is no US distributors currently, this is the now discontinued model. The newest model is called the Beethoven Baby Grand Reference, and it has those four XP cones where they, they have a flat piston driver on the front. I didn't want to review that one. It just wasn't very pretty looking. Call me shallow. Okay, that's me. All right, moving on. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the bigger brother. What you have here is a speaker that at its base price without the rosewood is $6,000. Basically $1,500 more than the Mozart Grands that I reviewed. What are you getting for that money? Well, you're getting an additional 3XP Spider Cone driver down below. You're getting a slightly larger cabinet with more, more volume. You're getting a dedicated three-way design, not a 2.5-way design in the Mozarts. This is a three-way design with a larger crossover. You have these crazy heavy-duty outriggers that actually allow you a good amount of forward and aft play. The rear and front baffles, oh my gosh, they're a little bit thicker. They're 1.5 inches thick. Can you hear that? So very well built, very heavy, slim, slim line speaker. And of course, I just keep saying it, it's a, it's a very pretty speaker. The lower bass drivers, they need only to focus on that 150 hertz on down to 30 hertz. With the mid range 3XP can concentrate on the vocal clarity and instrument detail while that specially coded spec scan speak tweeter is taking over above 2.3K. Let's look at the pictures here of that crossover, shall we? I'm gonna say there is a fair amount of cheap parts, but then there's also some modest, there's some modest parts in there. The efficiency is, is a claimed 90 dB at one watt with a four ohm rating. But I'm going to be able to show you our chart from Stereophile where when tested, this speaker actually dipped down to 2.3 ohms. Man, that is some rough territory for anything less than a very well-built power amplifier. I imagine those thick copper traces play their part. And there is one hefty, uh, there's one hefty coil on the dual bass drivers that is not found in the smaller Mozart. <clears throat> Again, Cabinet is made of real wood throughout with specific bracing at key locations. The midwoofer and tweeter are separated by their own compartment. Now, unfortunately, I never did learn through my research or getting word back from Vienna Acoustics about their insistence on using these shielded drivers. That's just going to have to remain a mystery. Now, I'm going to say it. For my personal taste, adding the $500 for the Rosewood, you're getting much more speaker here than the, than the $8,000 Harbeth Super HL5 Plus XDs that I reviewed. So how do they perform? As I had said in my original review of the Mozart versus the Compact 7s, these two speaker companies, man, they have so many sonic similarities and there is a true house sound to the Harbus as there is a true house sound as you move from the, from the Mozart up into the Beethoven. With the Vienna acoustics, there is a key structure that remains. Their ability to resolve information and instrument type of nuance 
as well as the body and the pitch of the notes, all while sounding very smooth and natural. They lack the edginess and are quite refined. Where I am missing punch and impact from those Mozarts, the Baby Grands, I was very impressed when playing, say, Faith No More, the track Epic. The electric guitar bass strumming had real bite to it. It had this grungy, metallic texture and energy that it sounded like you were hearing it from a, through a real guitar amp. That's what it reminded me of. And really, the Baby Grands, they remain true to Faith No More's funky rhythm, and it just, it just had meat on the bones. Here's where I have to do a hard pause for you reviewers. When played back at, at 90 dB, there is no competition. There's just the, the Beethovens. There is no competition against the, against the Mozarts when it comes to what the Beethovens can do for, for bass energy and those lower 30 hertz notes. And that begs a couple of questions. I'm going to put this chart up for you one more time. I need you to see this. I need you to see this with your own eyes because this part's important. Here's the Mozart specs. Now here is the Beethoven Baby Grand specs. Are you see what I'm trying to point out to you? Look at those frequency ranges. Both are identical 30 hertz to 22K. Now, how the hell is that possible? given the Beethoven Baby Grand is a larger speaker with an extra with an extra woofer. This is where you judge by specs only folks can lose the forest for the trees. All right. The Mozart it may it may play tone down to 30 hertz range but it is very light and it is lacking energy. Now, follow me out with this rough analogy. With the Mozarts, it goes like this. It's 2 p.m., it's 72 degrees outside and overcast. Mozart. <laughs> the baby gram. It's 2 p.m., it's 72 degrees outside and it is sunny and you are outside filling and you are outside filling the sun's rays on your skin. Now, most of you should know immediately how, you know, how pleasing it is to be absorbing the sun's rays directly on your skin when it's 72 degrees outside. That's a difference you can feel Okay, that is the difference and that is how stark the bass performance difference is. With the Mozarts, yeah, you get it. You know what you're supposed to be hearing and you're hearing it, but you're not feeling it. With the Beethoven Baby Grants, you're getting it all and you're feeling it and you're feeling connected completely, mind, body, and soul. I'm exaggerating the contrast, but it is a pretty big contrast when listening to the two speakers in my room. And I just, I had to kind of give it to you that way. So when I move on to Rodrigo E. Gabriela and I was playing the track PPA, it, at, a, at a very energetic 93 dB, uh, there is a palpability to to their music and just the the hollow tone and the ringing decay of of their guitars and especially again the way that Gabriella does her strum beat on the body of the guitar uh, it you know I'll say it that that spe that spatial decay that just comes through in a manner that makes me forget to be writing any notes down, I'm so lost in the music that I just, I want to absorb the kinetic energy coming off of Rodrigo and Gabriela. It is, it is one of the best compliments that I can give to the Beethoven Baby Grand. As a reviewer, so many times, 
I was sitting, I'd write down the track, I'd write down the artist, I'd start listening, and I might start to write down one note, and then I'm just listening, and then the song is done. And I look down, oh, okay, and the next song. Done, done, done. And 10 songs later, I have no notes. And really, I just, that's, that's the ability to enjoy the music that the Beethoven baby grand convey versus other speakers where I'm annoyed by anomalies. And of course, I'm writing this down and I'm writing that down. And it doesn't make me forget my reviewer cap. The Beethoven Baby Grants, they made me forget that I'm a reviewer and I just want to just listen to as much music for as many hours as I can with these speakers. If there's another crucial area that the Baby Grand would throw a little bit of shade on the Mozart, it was definitely with its handling of female vocals. And specifically in the other review, I had mentioned that Another kudos to the Harbeth Compact 7s and why it beat out the Mozarts was specifically just how the, the Compact 7s handled Alison Krauss. That was not an issue whatsoever, so I'm, I'm of the opinion that with the three-way design, how the crossovers network is worked out with the Beethoven, is that the XP, the 3 XP driver gets to focus more on just those vocals so that it's doing less with the bass and how it worked in my room as with the Mozarts, they tended to sound like the vocalist was five feet further back and in so many, and for so many tracks that the vocals were actually become, were coming from behind other musicians on the stage instead of like it should be where the vocalist is out front ahead of the side musicians. Not an issue with the baby ground whatsoever. As a matter of fact, listening to you know Shelby Lynn and just her, the, her dark, smoky, sultry voice on just a little lovin', it really, it really sets up the atmosphere. These speakers set up the atmosphere with her vocals locked up front where they should be and it portrays that that ambiance it portrays the atmosphere i've said it before that i love to feel like i'm in that small club that small jazz club and i have this private session with with my favorite musicians the the beethoven baby grands they do a fantastic job of that because it keeps the vocalist where where she should be Amongst the three speakers, if there was one area where, where the Mozarts would still, would still edge out these two speakers, it had to do with the holographic presentation and the holographic imaging. There were so many times with so many tracks where the Mozart Grand, I just felt like I was wearing a musical blanket and it was so pleasing and yet at times, it was startling that I would have musical notes playing perpendicular to my ears. <laughs> and naturally, uh, my instincts would be to, I'd want to look around in my room, like, how did it do that? Because of the bass weight and just the extra oomph and energy that comes off of the Beethovens, there's something about that, that lower mid-range energy that kind of pulls, it pulls together a little bit tighter in the imaging range and it pulls the music together in a little bit more to where I'm gonna say it was nine tenths of what the it was nine tenths of what the Mozarts pulled off on as far as, as a holographic sound. Both speakers, both Vienna speakers I will say when it comes to holographic holographic imaging bested both Harbeth, the Compact 7s, and the Super HL5s. No contest in that department. But when it comes down to is those Mozart Grand SCs, they're kind of like a 1990s runway supermodel, if you know what I mean. As for the Baby Grand, how I conclude this is that there is a true house sound to the VA speakers. And yet, these are no hi-fi sounding speakers. 
These are not a hi-fi sounding speaker, much like my compliments to the Zoo Audio for different refined reasons. The Vienna Acoustics Baby Grant, they are to be respected for their honesty and their inclination to stay away from the frequency extremes. Here's another major compliment for the Baby Grants. I was able to enjoy every single musical genre that I employed during my playback sessions. I mean, literally every single kind of musical genre that I listened to, the Baby Grands were absolutely a pleasure, a pleasure, much like the Harbeth Super HL5 Plus. It didn't matter, the orchestral music, the hard rock, the classic rock, jazz, dance, I mean, you know, even listening to something like the Glitch Mob, Drive It Like You Stole It, with the bass line and the synths, oh my gosh, these baby grands, they can actually, they can pull off dance music. And I can't, I can't say that about a lot of speakers that I've demonstrated. They're, they're good with these three or four genres, but then they fall down in these genres. It is, it is a testament to Peter Gangster's design with his crossovers, the drivers, just the general setup of his speakers that allow you to enjoy far more genres. And that's what makes them a non-hi-fi speaker because the higher up you get, the more you're listening to a quote-unquote audiophile speaker. Like those Avalon acoustics, like I, I just told you, I just... I didn't want to listen to hard rock. I didn't want to listen to classical rock. I didn't want to listen to, I didn't want to listen to classic rock. It just, it started pigeon, pigeonholing me into a box that I could only listen to this specific music because this is the only music that sounded good on those hi-fi speakers. Country music, you want to play a little Laureate Letta Lynn? Go right ahead, my God, I tell you what. And it just, they can do it. You know, when it comes to the musicality, these, while well, I'm, I'll get to that. These are up there. The Totem Acoustic Fires, the Harbeth Super HL5 Plus 8 HXDs, and these Baby Grants. Those, you know, the Super, you know, Jason Super 3, yeah, the Zoo Audio, but the Zoo Audio had some narrow features of certain genres. I wouldn't play with that as well. But if there's three speakers where I would happily play all manner of genre, there's your three from me. That brings me to a major confliction. I, as a reviewer and an owner, I'm conflicted. Do I sell my Compact 7s and do the deep dive and purchase the Baby Grants? It should be an easy decision for me and a and if I didn't have my reviewer hat and I didn't feel like I have a job and a duty, I would absolutely sell my Compact 7s and I would be buying these baby grants. But there's a major caveat for me and especially to you as a reviewer, I don't really play in the sandbox of these $6,000 speakers. Granted, it's a discontinued open box and I could get it for almost half price. Nevertheless, how do I compare what's a $6,500 speaker against all the other speakers that I want to review and want to enjoy? As you guys know, I have the Aperion, I have the Aperion Audio Concert V8B bookshelf speakers. So, you know, it, it makes more sense for me to keep something like the Compact 7s, which is a more realistic higher-end bookshelf speaker, to be my mainstay against most of the other types of speakers that I'm going to bring in. I don't, I have no intentions of bringing in a bunch of five and six thousand, seven thousand dollar speakers. That's just not the sound blocks that two channel listening plays in, at least not this year. Don't know about next year. That's, that's the future's problem. Nevertheless, for you out there, you only have one pair of speakers that you want to live with and you want a sonically pleasing speaker that can play with finesse, it can play with power, these things at 95 dB, 
can play the hell out of Tools Vicarious. And for those of you who want a little more just, I don't know, you want your Vivaldi Four Seasons with a little Fortissimo, go ahead and turn that spring on. Glorious with spring. Now, in total conclusion, you will find out what happens and what I do decide later on. But about the community pages, most of you don't ever go to my community post and see, the, see what I'm up to. And I just want to throw this out there. I put a lot of work and a lot of hours into creating an Excel file of modestly priced bookshelf speakers from $1,400 to a $3,000 cap price. Now, these are you, you know, this is a US based list, but there is a lot of hard to get European brands on that list. I have no less than 70 brands with the links and the models in the prices, even with some of the dealers that represent those particular brands. So if you're interested, I have that on a link to be able to download the Excel file on my community page post. And with all the work that I put into that and all the work I put into the reviews and the channel, I hope that by now I've earned, I've earned the right from you for you to subscribe and hit the all like bell so that you get my up-to-date notifications. With that, <sighs>「ベイビー・グラン」「SE」「Until next time I have the Peachtree Carina integrated amplifier to review」「I had a very good I had a very good phone interview with the folks at Peachtree」「They gave me 30 minutes of their time」「Went through some I think some critical questions for some big departures」for what Peachtree's done in the past, and I'm happy to share that with you. Plus, I've got the Aperion Audio. I did buy an open box pair of Monitor Audio Silver 7Gs to go against the Aperion Audios. I usually don't do popular speakers. And to balance, counterbalance that out, I bought a wonky pair of the same priced bookshelf speaker from a, a, a overseas brand that just is not being covered here in the United States. So I will reveal that at a later date. Until then, enjoy your music. So until then, continue to enjoy your music, relish your favorite tracks, go look for some new music, and I will see you next time.